The potential to surpass Gojo as the strongest sorcerer alive is something that very few characters in the series can lay claim to. Yuji and Megumi are both characters that Gojo implies will be able to surpass him in the future, but neither of these two are the focus of this video. Rather, we are going to be taking a look at their two upperclassmen with ridiculous potential, Kinji Hakari and Yuta Okotsu. Two characters that Gojo himself has already deemed powerful allies, and two characters that because of a few statements have found themselves in one of the most contentious matchups in the entire series. So in this video, me and No Operator will be putting this debate to rest and going over both of these characters' abilities in order to determine who wins and why. So to start off with Yuta and Hikari, just generally in their base forms, how do you think these two characters compare? So to clarify for the audience here, Yuta in base, quote unquote, is just Yuta, how he fought Yuji in the beginning of his reintroduction into the series. No Rika, no like full power, no like unleashing everything, whatever. Just base Yuta with his sword versus base Akari, no jackpot, no domain. How do you think these two characters stack up against each other in these more repressed forms? So I really feel like we're actually dealing with two really major hardcore heavy hitting close quarters fighters here for once um both yuta and hikari have great speed great attack power which whether you want to give hikari the leg up here and say his attack power is a little bit more respectable because he throws straight hands whereas yuta would most likely be using his sword throughout as we see in the fight with yuta and yuji if you get him up against someone that can throw good enough hands it really isn't going to make much of a difference we yeah. saw yuji basically destroy and break yuta's sword mid-battle so base to base does kind of make it even because eventually if Yuta does lose his sword hand to hand wise with Yuta, we see him be able to literally deflect a granite blast from Ishigori with his bare hand and use his reverse curse technique to kind of restore that damage. Yeah. And that's going to be Yuta's leg up is his going to be his reverse curse technique going up. So, I mean, neck and neck, they both really do have a lot of tools that are going to make them pretty nifty fighters when it comes to just base form and especially when they're just duking it out on bare bones without really using any of their uh you know better points of their arsenal but i don't know if you feel kind of differently yeah so i think that i think that they're like the gap between them probably isn't that large however i do think i would say that yuta has the advantage simply because we see that his body is able to hold up against like the highest output in the cooling games i don't know if you agree but i always assume that like ishigori's highest output statement would also refer to like hikari at full power kashima at full power all of these characters at their max and if you think that Ishigori's full strikes supersede that of like Jackpot Hikari's cursed energy output, that would kind of imply that Yuta being able to hold up to them and like like you said, outright block them with damage, yes, but damage that isn't like absolutely tearing through him. I would kind of believe that Yuta is a stronger fighter just due to the like significant amounts of cursed energy that he has. Obviously, as Yuji says, his movements are extremely hard to read because every attack can be a killing one. You never really can decide based off of his cursed energy which attack is going to be the deciding factor. He probably just has like higher durability than Akari. And as we've seen, Yuta, like as we've seen before, if you have enough cursed energy, you're also able to simply ignore the cursed energy property of, of when you're fighting. We see that with Kashimo versus Akari, and I imagine that Yuta would also be a character that fits into this category, seeing as how he has some of the highest amounts of cursed energy in the entire verse. It's called like immeasurable or infinite or boundless by multiple characters in the series at multiple different points and times in Jujutsu Kaisen. So I feel like Yuta, even if they're a little bit on the evener scale, like with the sword, um, just with his like his skills, the way he fights against Yuji, he seems to be I would I would overall say a more complete fighter even in base than Hikari is. Yeah, no, 100%. I agree with you on that front. Where Yuta definitely has a lot more options behind him that are gonna enable him to kind of take that upper hand against Hikari. Whereas I feel like Hikari definitely has shown great speed and great attack power. 
and we do know that Yuta is on the weaker side physically. Like you mentioned, his boundless cursed energy and as Ichigori refers to it as a water tank kind of feeling when you're going up against him hand to hand, definitely gives him the ability to match Akari in any kind of aspect that he really can. Um, so I feel like when it comes to just base versus base, when we're comparing Yuta who in base has access to reverse curse technique, a pretty high level cursed energy output, regardless of if it's max cursed energy output like Ishigori or not, it's definitely presenting Hikari some kind of danger. I feel like Hikari who at the most just has his hand-to-hand -hand combat and maybe a little bit of finesse behind it is definitely going to be put on the back foot in that sort of battle. Yeah, so I, I and I, I would agree with you there. I would agree with you there. Hikari seems to be a little bit more of like that brawler type, just going out there and just throwing hands. And he does seem to be skilled as well. Like, I don't want to make it out to seem like he's some he's some dumb meathead who doesn't have any sense of like strategic battle sense. But I do think that Yuta is more complete there. And I mean, if we go far enough to say that, like we up the ante a little bit where Yuta has Rika at his disposal. I mean, I think we both agree if base Yuta without Rika is getting the job done. Rika, even when not fully manifested, would also just make it overkill. Um, you know, like without she's, a doubt. Yeah, she's clearly strong enough to hold Yuji still. Yuji like is, is is flabbergasted at the idea of some Shikigami being able to just hold him without any sort of struggle or strain. And I think like Yuta could run that same setup and catch Akari off guard like that. Now, I think this is, you know, base base Yuta, base Akari fighting, yeah, I think some people may agree on that, but I think the more contentious thing between these two, I think the thing that everybody kind of thinks about when they think about, like, Hikari versus Yuta is a jackpot Hikari, a Hikari that is on the roll, a Hikari that's really, really feeling the fever versus Yuta, um, and we'll talk about when Yuta would bring out his abilities, when he thinks it would be, it would make sense to bring out, like, the full Rika manifestation and things of that nature, but, just off the bat, like a Jackpot Hikari versus Yuta and Rika, not fully manifestation, not five minutes. How do you think that type of fight goes? Well, I mean, Ronin, I mean, we heard Yuta say that Hikari and Jackpot stronger, so case closed. Yeah, of course, of course, of course, now, like actually. no contention. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, um, uh, starting with a little bit of contention here, um, if Hikari is in Jackpot with the consistent reverse curse technique on him, that's basically going to be healing him permanently regardless of what Yuta or Rika is able to do with him while that does add a lot of length to the battle and that does add something that Yuta is gonna have to really work around um I feel like he's definitely going to require Rika in this sort of situation without even getting into like you said Yuta awakening and basically using his curse technique basically with just Yuta and partially manifested Rika would he really be able to go up against Jackpot Hikari? I feel like that's a really easy question to answer because even though we've seen the likes of Ishigori be able to, you know, throw hands with Rika themselves, I really don't, I really feel like it would be a similar situation with Hikari where, yeah, sure, he may be able to equally match Rika on the grounds of physical combat. You still have Yuta kind of coming in to throw Hikari off of the track because regardless of the fact if he can keep up with one of them with being jackpotted and increased with his attack power his speed and his cursed energy output all of those features it still comes down to he's gonna have to pay attention to two different people that regardless of jackpot or not are basically gonna be on his level or even if you say that jackpot okari is stronger they're gonna be at least somewhat close to his level mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and let's talk about that statement, right? Because one of the biggest things that factors into Yuta being able to trump Akari in a fight, in my mind at least, actually comes from the statements made about Hikari, the context of why those statements are made, and surrounding statements made about Yuta throughout the story of Jujutsu Kaisen. Obviously, everybody knows that Yuta says Hikari is stronger than him, and while I, in the past, and many other people take this as a face value, Hikari greater than Yuta statement, I think that situations like Toto referring to Goodwill Yuji as stronger than him, despite Toto still clearly being able to hold off Yuji in a fight, even without the use of his technique, shows that in Jujutsu Kaisen, stronger doesn't always have to denote an overall advantage in a fight, 
and can, in some instances, pertain to a specific thing or trait. In the Toto example, it literally just refers to physical strength. Now, the reason I believe Yuta's statement is most likely highly contextual is in part because of the phrasing, but also partly because of the narrative implications that lend to a consistent idea of Yuta being the strongest person that exists on the good guy squad. The first thing that got Yuta's potential superiority in my mind as a narratively consistent idea comes from the mouth of Gojo right before he is sealed away. And in this moment, although Gojo should be aware of Akari's abilities and considers him a sorcerer with a high amount of talent, and one that he even plans to rely on in the future, Gojo mentions Yuta when talking about disrupting Kenjaku's plans, and doesn't even mention or think about Hikari as someone to deal with or oppose the likes of Kenjaku. And while this alone isn't enough to be sufficient evidence against Yuta's statement, when this lack of regard for Hikari's abilities is coupled with a narrator statement that in some translations literally just places Yuta as Gojo's number two in the entire verse, it's pretty easy to see why having Yuta over Hikari is still a possible and prominent argument that people have. I know that the Viz translation says that Yuta is second to Gojo in unusual abilities, but Viz is pretty notorious for missing the nuance of statements in their translations, and even called Naobito Nobito in an official volume release. So while they are the official delivery system of translated Jujutsu Kaisen content, let's not pretend that they are infallible in their translations. I won't take a specific hard stance one way or another, but I just want to call into question Viz's translation in comparison to others that people have seen to be a little bit more consistent. In addition to these two points, we also have Maki pushing back against Yuta's praise of Akari here, which I previously just assumed was waffling from her, but could also be interpreted as Maki talking about strength in a different context to Yuta, as we've seen multiple JJK characters do so in the past. We also know, based on some chapter extra content, that Maki isn't so petty as to not acknowledge strength despite her personal feelings, as we see that along with a bunch of other JJK characters, in spite of her not caring for Gojo all that much and thinking him to be an idiot, she regards him as the strongest without contention. And before the perfect preparation arc, she even begrudgingly admits that Megumi is more powerful and suited to be the leader of the clan, despite her having every in-story and in-character reason to want to reject this fact. So while I do agree that Maki isn't some objective, non-biased, arbiter of truth, I think it's important to note that she hasn't shown the personality traits of one that refuses to acknowledge strength in spite of personal motivation not to, and in fact has shown the direct opposite traits, showing that, in spite of her own personal feelings, Maki does seem to consistently acknowledge the strength of others, so her contention to Yuta's statement is something that I take with some importance. To me, all of these statements and general sentiments surrounding Yuta, when combined, create a consistent narrative that should not be overlooked by one individual statement, and instead, we as the audience should be looking to incorporate and balance it out. So, while I would like to say that I don't think Yuta is outright wrong or lying here, I think it's possible that Yuta is either saying Jackpot Hikari is physically more powerful than him, or Yuta is acknowledging that in their current situation, an ability like Hikari's is one that can allow him to defeat opponents outside of his pay grade and wear them down consistently in a way that Yuta with his more strict time limit simply might not be able to. Which, once again, doesn't mean that Yuta wouldn't be able to beat Hikari if they were to fight, but more so that Hikari's abilities are more suited for continuous combat against strong foes in a way that Yuta simply isn't. Now, while I think all of the previously established reasoning is sufficient in placing doubt on Hikari just being obviously above the likes of Yuta, and now leaves discussion for why me and Nooperator think that Yuta may have the edge, if none of the arguments that I've laid out seem to satisfy you so far, and you are strictly holding on to the idea that Hikari is stronger than Yuta based on his statement, fine. But meeting this line of thinking with equal contextual ignorance, I would ask you this. Where in this interaction does Yuta mention how strong Hikari is relative to the combined efforts of Yuta and Rika, an entity that we've seen has abilities that outright surpass Yuta's when being fully manifested? Sure, based on Yuta's statement, Hikari may be stronger than one Yuta, but we really have no reason to think he can take on two Yuta level fighters at once. 
Dewey. And without a direct remark from Yuta specifying this, Hikari doesn't really have an argument that supports him being able to take on Yuta and Rika's combined efforts. So whether you accept a more overarching, narrative-based, contextual way of arguing, or a hyper-literal, statement-based interpretation, Yuta is someone that can be argued superior to Kinji Hikari regardless, and as such, I think this conversation is an important, or at least interesting one, to have. No, completely. Uh, you pretty much hit the nail on the head right there with one. A, a war of attrition is not something that anybody wants to get in with Yuta. Uh, it's actually, Yuta is probably the worst person that Akari could try a battle of attrition against, simply because Yuta has the boundless cursed energy. He has all of the stock of energy and power that he needs to kind of go one for one with Akari, regardless of how many rounds there are, where there's not too many sorcerers that you can really say that with. You know, eventually, if you put Akari in against someone that he's countered against, he may win just over time just because he can keep going. But Yuta, even as we see in Yuta's battle with, Se uh, with Sendai Colony, with uh, the four pillars of power, we do see that Yuta, when he basically runs on empty, is basically goes, okay, I'm just going to use my curse technique, and he gets completely rejuvenated with re the, all the curse energy that he stores inside of Rika. He basically almost has his own stockpile of cursed energy, his own kind of second life, his own kind of second recharge that he has. So one, he could probably go toe to toe with Hikari for a couple rounds. And then if Hikari really is able to stick it out, Yuta's got his own level of rejuvenation that he can bring into the fight. And, he, and then he's 10 times stronger with all of his copied curse techniques. Yeah, so I think I think his arsenal is, is something that's, that's really tough to deal with. And one thing to compare is just their full their their respective full powers because even if you think hikari's stronger the level of like which he's stronger is ambiguous right not only does yuta say, say it he's like a relatively humble person but on top of that we do see that maki kind of puts it into contention now whether or not you think maki is like the most reliable narrator and that her word trumps yuta's is fine you can say that she's incorrect or that like she is not more reliable of a narrator than yuta but the fact that it isn't so clear cut as there is like an objectively right answer to someone like Maki does kind of paint it to me that it's like Hikari could be physically more powerful or whatever without that being a, a, such an overwhelming factor that it completely warps the fight. And if they are in their respective full power forms, right? If they are both facing off uh, Hikari with his four minutes and 11 seconds versus Yuta with his five minutes, I mean, that just gives you a very distinct time advantage for someone like Yuta. And Yuta pretty, like, should pretty clearly understand how Hikari's domain works, considering that he knows when he gets worked up, he's stronger than him. And if he understands how his domain works, that means that Yuta will have an extra, essentially, 50 seconds of full power with Rika. So basically, there's two Yutas fighting a base Hikari inside of his domain. If Yuta understands that he only has a little bit before Hikari can open up that second jackpot, Yuta can do so many different things. One, open his own domain expansion to clash, install the effects of Hikari's, while Rika goes to work and absolutely bodies a base Hikari. Two, he can shoot off a Yuta Rika blast that would just obliterate base Hikari. Three, he can use the curse speech wombo combo that I've mentioned earlier in this video. And I mean, he just has so many unique different ways to take someone like Hikari down within his domain expansion and stop Hikari from like continuously rolling and rolling and rolling and rolling and like going on this perpetual motion of gambling. I think Yuta probably deals with Hikari one of like one of the best comparatively to other characters because yes, Hikari is a very good character when it comes to like war of attritions, but Yuta is no slouch either, right? Yuta can hang with the best of them in that regard. Nope, I completely 110% agree with you. Uh, I, I feel like everything that yuta just has at his disposal uh he just has too much at the end of the day he just really has too much for hikari to take on um there is just he has everything that he has in just his base form which whether you want to agree or not uh yuta does probably have the strength to take on at least one round of jackpot without actually calling on his curse technique and if he does call on his curse technique he can match hikari's domain expansion with just his own curse technique as you mentioned before, he has the extra basically 49 seconds to then take that interval time and, as you mentioned, either decapitate him if he really needs to during the time interval or, as I mentioned before, take him out 
during the interval that he has in the extra 50 seconds that he has. Yeah. So it really doesn't seem like Akari has any win conditions uh, from what we've talked about before. Um, I'm not sure why this really ends up being such a controversial discussion. Yeah. Like, the only, like, once again, similar to most Hikari versus, like, high-level character debates, it's the win con for Hikari is last long. Because nothing that Hikari does implies that he has enough attack potency to really put down a, like, relatively full power Yuta. I mean, we see that versus Kashimo. The, the Kashimo that he wins against is a Kashimo that exhausts all of his cursed energy, right? And, like, blows up. That like up to that point, if you if you reread the fight, like I encourage you to reread that fight. Kashimo at like best, the damage he takes is like he spits out blood or he gets like a nosebleed or something, right? Like look at the extensive damage these two characters are going back and forth with. Yeah, Hakari is tanking a lot as well, but when you look at the damage he does to Kashimo, it is nosebleed level. And don't get me wrong, Kashimo is really really strong. He's also really really clearly durable. But I mean, when all of your hacks or all of your abilities amount to, I can punch really hard and heal really fast, it's going to be tough to deal with somebody that can also punch really hard and heal really fast and has something else that can punch really hard and heal really fast. And then like 30 other curse techniques that you have to deal with on top of that, right? So when you look at it like that, when you take into account that, let's say Hikari is just blatantly stronger than Yuta for those four minutes and 11 seconds, that doesn't equate to a win because Hikari's very glaring weakness is distinctly that gap in the domains. And Yuta, knowing that technique, considering he's talked about it before, would be able to target it with Hikari not really being able to target a clear weakness with Yuta. I mean, it would literally just be a 2v1 at all times. And considering that Yuta as a reverse curse technique user should understand the glaring weakness of it, would be going for the head the entire time like non-stop as soon as it's as soon as that that reverse curse technique is thrown into the fray yuta and rika would be going for headshots all the way through and i think that they could definitely land it by immobilizing him or hell i mean yuta's been shown to literally tell people to die with his with his curse speech he could pull out something like that if he if he if he needed to so i think while I understand the contention between Yuta and Hikari just because of that statement, to some extent I get it. Yuta just has the hacks, he has the versatility, the strength, the durability, and Rico, all that help him go up against someone like Hikari and most likely come out victorious. Yeah, and actually, I don't know if you want to, um, I have, honestly, I have nothing more to say. I think we pretty much, I, I think we hit the nail on the head. Yeah, for sure. So, yeah, you know, Hikari would probably put up a good fight, but I still think that Yuta would, would come out victorious even if it's a high difficulty fight so if you guys ended up enjoying this video and want to see more versus battle collabs between me and no operator make sure to subscribe to not only me but no up me and him both make great jjk content and especially versus battle content we've both been collabing on these channels quite a bit so if you want to see more no up content and collabing with me there's videos on my channel and there's videos on his channel just for that i mean just like you said we've got plenty of uh content that we make in regards to different jujutsu kaisen versus battles and and the like i've got plenty on my channel and ronin you probably already know has plenty on his so definitely feel free if you enjoy his content definitely jump over to mine because if you like hearing his voice you'll definitely hear it over on my channel yep 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 thank you not for joining me and we'll uh we'll see you guys in the next one